G'day fellas and welcome to a casted game spawning in over on the east side of the map playing in the red as the Abyssin Dynasty we've got Marine Lord and on the opposite side of the map spawning in as the blue also playing the Abyssin we've got Zertan ladies and gentlemen welcome to game number two of this series this best of three series between these two titans we've got Marine Lord Zertan two guys that have been teamed up well i say teamed up i mean they've got their own teams now we've got myi zerton we've got izzy marine lord they're, they're representing they're out here repping let's talk a little bit about this opening that we've got right now a little bit of difference between these two what do we have here so over on marine lord's side you can see we've got that very typical abbasid opening it is going to be just that classic you know villagers <laughs> under the tc collecting the sheep just the house of wisdom nothing too crazy no milk over on the other side, though, Zertan going absolutely ham, adding in a lumber camp. So not even just going onto the straggler tree and then dropping off at the mill. Just quite literally going straight over here. So he's going to be looking to go for an early wheelbarrow here. Now, this is an Abbasid mirror. And I know what you guys are thinking. Hold on, Drongo. We're in game number two in a best of three series. And both players are throwing out the Abbasid dynasty on Dry Arabia. What the hell is going on? No French... No Mongols, no Rus. They are literally throwing out... Well, no Delhi, hey, let's get that one out there as well. They're literally throwing this out in game number two. Double Abbasid Dynasty. So I guess my question is to you guys, I mean, we, we've seen this throughout the last couple of weeks. The Abbasid Dynasty seem to be rising. Are these guys the new ST civilization? I'm starting to think they might be because they are a versatile civilization. You seem to be able to do a lot with them. They don't really have a lot of bad matchups. I mean, the worst one's probably the Rus, and that's a relatively... I'm not going to say it's an easy matchup. But it's a its a complex matchup. Let's just put it that way. Uh, but uh, I'm, I'm curious to see how this game unfolds because the, the typical thing that you would expect is, is what Marine Lord is doing. So it's the three sheep under the TC... Uh, and then by by the time that these guys run out, you're able to actually transfer over to berries and get the mill down on the age up. And then during the age up, you get the wheelbarrow. You also look to get your fresh foodstuffs. And then you're very quickly on for that second TC. So I'm curious what this timing is that's going to be coming out from Zerton because he's only dropping down that House of Wisdom now. But you can see that with that wheelbarrow coming through, it's a very, very quick wheelbarrow. The two vills on gold to start. It's, it's going to be a bit of a delayed age up. We'll check in over on Marine Lord. You can see he's got the, the uh, age up coming through. It was about 2 minutes 40 for Zertan. Let's see exactly where it is because he's going to be quite a bit behind. I suspect. I wouldn't be surprised if that's a 40 second delay at least to get that. What was? What do we say? 240? So let's see if he gets it up before 320. Um, but uh, gathering up Villagers 3. He's gone for a single scout opening. We'll double check over on Marine Lord's side. He's gone for a double scout opening. So quite a bit of difference there. And I, I think that's going to be a contributing factor. So even with a, a double scout, Marine Lord still up that much earlier. And that's just the consequence of having that early wheelbarrow. And we now see those villagers dropping off an extra little bit of gold just simply because they've got that wheelbarrow. So it means they're doing uh, more, more, or rather, they're, they're doing more mining, less walking. Uh, but indeed, it's going to be at least 320, that last villager. Where is she? This one right here. Gathering up that last little bit of gold. So already you can see it's a 50 second delay before he's able to click up. But he doesn't even have the resources here uh, for food. He's just, look at him. He's taking his time. He's taking his sweet bippy time right now. You're going to cancel one of those villagers. There we go. It gets canceled. He drops it down at 340. A full minute behind Marine Lord. That is a big yikes if I've ever seen one. Look at the difference that you got here. Obviously with the Abbasid Dynasty, you can't, um, you, you can't... Uh, uh, a change how fast you age up. It's just a set in stone, quite literally set in stone. We'll set in golden food, but you guys get the point. All right, well, let's check in over on the other side of the map. We'll see how Marine Lord's doing. Uh, so it's going to be Wheelbarrow that's coming through for him any second now. It's a little bit delayed uh, before he researches it. There we go. Uh, and now going to be looking to get in that fresh food stuffs as well. Four villagers still on gold. He'll be moving out towards stone. We can see him now taking it. It's going to be, I would suspect it's double, uh, triple TC for both of these guys. Uh, normally, uh, it would be rare to go double TC. You could do a double TC in into like a, a heavy age two play but i still think that's going to lose in in the long run to the a or to the three tcs but now back over here zertany is gathering up gold he's got all the gold that he needs for that fresh food stuff so he's going to be behind on the food count that's for sure he's going to be behind at least 40 food or rather at least 50 food because marine Lord's going to have fresh food stuff in well before him wheelbarrow is coming in 
villagers on gold have been pulled off now. He's looking for that second town center coming up already. Zerton well and truly on the way. So it looks like he might be rushing that second TC. That might be the thought process. But Marine Lord already going to be dropping down that stable. So might be thinking about getting some early pressure. Look at this. Rallying over towards this position. Now, Zerton's quite heavy uh, when it comes to the villagers on stone. He's got eight villagers out here on stone. He knows how important it is to collect all this stone up as quickly as possible. Running that villager back. Just careful, fearful of it, uh, of it losing its life. The age up now comes through. Five minutes, 25. Fresh foodstuffs gets clicked immediately. He's got enough resources in the bank for another villager. He trains it up and town center going to be coming down at 5.30. Marine Lord on the other side of the map. Nowhere inside that town center. Look at that. A little bit of difference. Holy dooly. Ladies and gentlemen, watch out. We got ourselves a build order over here. Uh, but Marine Lord's added in some extra villagers onto that stone. Obviously already has the horsemen uh, rallied over towards this side of the map. Still yet to have it come out. Scout just spotting that one out as well. Second TC well and truly up. And we see a barracks in response now. Fresh foodstuffs is in that second TC. Just coming up. So these villagers are going to have a little bit of a price reduction on them. This one going to be the last 50 food villager, despite it saying 25. And uh, now another house getting added in, extending out that network, looking to grab that final 10th house, or 10th building, rather. Uh, so doing well so far, though. I, I got to be honest, I'm liking Zerton's opening. This is pretty beautiful. Uh, so obviously a little bit of a delay. He gets the early wheelbarrow in, but at, as a result, that makes it so he is able to uh, to age up slower, but get the second TC down much faster. You can see Marine Lord still yet to make that second TC. Now only just making that second TC, six minutes 30. So there's going to be some difference here in the uh, in the timings between these two guys. Keep in mind, we had a double scout opening from Marine Lord. So he's going to be behind quite a bit when it comes to the village account. We'll double check with the village account as well. Once this second TC comes up, that's when we'll really uh, look to test it right before that, sec or that first villager comes out for him, just so that we can really gauge it. But stable now coming out, going with a, a barracks stable opening spearman gonna force these units back he's just looking to defend the mining camp wants to make sure it stays up so it's counting towards that that bounty obviously he's up now getting that extra 15 percent and that's the primary buff that's gone through we still don't see marine lord hitting that just yet actually let's double check he's on eight out of ten at the moment so still yet to hit that 10 out of 10 but now we've got that second tc coming through Villager going to get queued. Villager going to get queued. Villager going to get queued. Marine Lord, queue that villager. There's a villager. So, villager count at the moment for uh, Zerton. Sits at 31. Marine Lord on 26. Whew, a five villager difference. And remember, that's going to stay there the entire game. That that does not... That doesn't change until villagers start going down. But Marine Lord starting to think a little bit more outside the box. We've got ourselves a third TC on the way, whereas Zerton... He's just focusing on the two, and that could live to haunt him because when it comes to town centers in this matchup, the more you make, the merrier you are. Now, obviously, there's diminishing returns on your TCs, but you've got to remember, Abbasid Dynasty, Abbasid Dynasty, rather, they get cheaper villagers. So if you're making three TCs, you're going to be producing three times as many villagers as someone on one TC. That's facts. Good facts there, Drongo. Uh, but by the same token, you're, you're getting more rewards, or more of a reward, rather, from that economic wing and from that bonus. So by having three TCs, you're utilizing your civilization bonus a lot more effectively than a person on two, two TCs. And it's only a matter of time until that starts paying off. So there's a little, sh there's a short little window that Marine Lord's going to be quite susceptible to a an attack. And the question's going to be whether Zerton can spot that out. Now, his scout is moving across the map. We did see it uh, come underneath here. And he would have spotted out that the, the stone was being taken off that outcropping. So I'll be curious to see. That there should be one of two responses from Zerton. Number one, villagers move out towards this position and look to try and take more stone so he can drop his own third TC down. Number two, a timing attack. Whether that happens in Feudal, whether that happens in Castle. If it happens in Castle, it is going to be too late. Uh, the, the, oh, 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 boar pull, boar pull, Marine Lord, pulling the boar, he is getting his mum involved, hey, you can't do that, Marine Lord, that is not fair, you, this isn't like primary school, you don't just get to call your mum and, and get her to bail you out of the situation, look at that, look at that, huge damage coming out over onto those spears, not really, but you guys, hey, yeah, we, we making Marine Lord jokes, we get to have some fun. So, now, you can, you can see what Zerton's done, though, right, like, Z Zerton's, I realised this, he said, okay, well, if you're going 3TC, that's fine. I'm just... I'm going to go heavy all in. I will go heavy all in. I'll just keep making double villages at, at a time. But right now, you've invested 700 resources in a third town center. And you have now got to try and defend against my attack. Where I'm putting 100% of my resources into units and villages. But we don't, we don't consider that one. Uh, so, still posturing. Good little spot here that he's got. 
uh, between it. I don't think he's found the third TC just yet. Indeed, he hasn't. The scout was looking for it on that south side. Now, he should know that there is a hunt up to the north. Uh, and that, that is a potential option for him. And you could see the way that he was posturing. He kind of thought it might have been around here, maybe towards the back. Didn't find it. Looking to try and take out that Camel Archer. We see a spear coming out, though. Should be able to hold on a little bit. Second barracks going to be coming up, so he's looking to really go ham on this one. Hardened Spearman is, is through as well. Going to be careful to fight underneath that town center. That thing will F you up. And now it looks like beautiful little trade coming in. Marine Lord trying his best just to single Camel Archer. And you can see he's really struggling when it comes to the macro. He's got units that are on the way on the way through, uh, but doesn't really have the production for it. And you can see he's starting to really struggle uh, with this. More than a thousand resources in the bank, definitely unlike him. Uh, and uh, now going to be forced away from that wood line. Third barracks going to be coming out. Zertan on the other side, though, forced away from this. He's continuing to rally up towards this stone outcropping. We'll watch, wait, and see how he plays it, but he's still yet to find that third TC. And this is the consequence of only going for that single scout opening. We talked about it a bit earlier. Single scout versus double scout. If you've got that single scout, sure, it delays your economy, or rather, it helps out your economy in the early game, but definitely hurts your scouting in the mid game. And that's what we see happening right now. This is the scout. There's only a single scout, and he's just looking. Is he looking for the third TC? He just doesn't know about the third TC? I think that's definitely going to be the case, because remember, the longer this game goes on, the more and more it's going to be good for Marine Lord. He's sitting now on 51 villages compared to the 54 of Zertan, so slowly and steadily he's catching up. Remember, for every two that Zertan makes, Marine Lord's making three. So, you know, after five villages have been made from their respective TCs, Marine Lord will have caught up. So in about two minutes, he catches up. But remember, it's not just about catching up. It's also about surpassing. You've invested an extra 700 resources in this bad boy, and you've got yourself a little bit population blocked. Yikes. Uh, so it, it really means going going hard. And I think for certain, the big factor is trying to find that third TC and then punishing it. But now, never mind. We've, hold on a minute. I apologize. We found that third TC. He's actually just going to fall back from this position. Now, no armor on that bad boy means that the villagers could have eaten through it, but this is very unfortunate. Zertan getting caught with his pants down down towards that southern position was going for his own third TC. Still yet to find that one up towards the north. We see the horseman once again looming. He's almost anchoring down towards this position, almost thinking, well, there's no possible way Marine Lord could have a TC anywhere else. And once again, the horsemen making their way away. Villagers going all the way back to the town. Sent a beautiful micro from Marine Lord. Managed to take out one of those villagers. Now moving away once again from that town center. A couple more horsemen over towards that northern side. Look at him go. Just absolutely cleaning up around this position. Certain on the defense. Looking to hold it out in feudal a little bit longer. Not yet committing to any kind of castle age. We can see he's only got 120 gold in the bank. Marine Lord, not even mining gold. He doesn't need gold. What's what's gold to a man that's got as many TCs as me? That is a great question, Marine Lord. Now, villagers going to be under attack. One of them might actually go down. Indeed, it does. A very rare scenario to see villagers going down a horseman. That's kind of wild. You don't really expect that. Uh, but units did eventually make their way out over to this southern TC. It's going to be a little bit late for Zertan. The consequence of this is now, that, now Marine Lord is caught up. Remember, villages have gone down. We saw a villager go down right here to the horseman. We saw a second villager go down here. That's two villagers. And so now, village account for Zertan sits on 62. Marine Lord on 67. So things have started flipping. And now, Marine Lord's got a little bit of a lead. So I think really it's important about as soon as you identify, okay, my enemy's gone for a, th a third TC, I now need to do the same thing or I need to commit. And very easily, I think very easily, Zertan could have made a battering ramp or two and taken out this town center without any hassle whatsoever. He had more than enough horsemen, more than enough spears. There was no real threat. The problem was he couldn't find it. And why couldn't he find it? Because he only had one scout. It all goes back to these decisions at the very beginning of the game that you make. When you make a decision to go for a single scout opening, you make a decision to neglect your mid-game scouting. And that's exactly what's happened. Go be careful. A lot of spears looking to try and get in on the action. It's Golden Age 2 already coming through from Marine Lord. That is very early. On the golden age but look, look how many uh how many population he's already up to here up to 120 population he's just pumping out units non-stop 76 villages i think part of the reason why uh the abbasid is so damn strong at the moment is because of these long longer feudal fights the longer the feudal fights are the better for abbasid they want to stay feudal because obviously they don't have access to knights it makes it a little bit harder to deal with knights of their enemy but once these numbers start really getting up that's when the phalanx just gets so damn strong because spears they're able to work well in mass because instead of just this front row attacking it's also that second row attacking as well because they've got those extended spears that allow them just to go a little bit further Villagers falling back away from that woodline. Nice little raids here by Zertan, doing exactly what he needs to. 
Still just going to be sticking with three TCs. And th remember, that that's that's probably the, the, the best point. Anything more than that, I feel like four TCs, you're probably just wasting it away. Now, obviously, there's arguments for four TCs, but I'll be honest with you guys, it, it's kind of crazy. I mean, if you're looking on, on a, on a, at a graph between three and four TCs, you can barely spot the difference. But the, the amount that the fourth TC will delay you is quite significant. So you've got to be very careful uh, with adding in that fourth TC. But Battering Ram's going to be coming down now for certain. So looking to be a bit more aggressive in this second age. We can see he was kind of posturing towards a bit of a, a Castle Age play. But has instead decided, you know what? We're just going to stick it out in Feudal. We're going to get some upgrades. We see them coming through now. Bloomery as well as Textiles did come through. And now going to be turning the Battering Rams on that town center. When it comes to a defense though, Marines has got a pretty nice amount of spears. And I like this. Uh, a heavy amount of spears make it very difficult to deal with because you can see we've got a huge amount of, sp of uh, archers out for certain, but he's not going to be able to micro these archers well enough to kill the spears in the same way that these spears are going to be able to attack. There's going to be a lot of overkill from these archers. Battering ramps down, moving in. Charge is going to be happening. Oh my lord, that, that was only one charge that went in. That was a good little defense right there by Zerton. Not a lot of spearmen for him though, only 19. Actually, I say 19 is not a lot. It's a fair amount. Nice little raid back here as well. Going to be able to pick up villagers. I, I take that back. There's a spearman over there instead. Town center going to be under threat. Marine Lord now going to be on the defense. We enter into the cinematic mode as the battering rams begin to batter down the hatches. The men at arms, nowhere to be seen because this is a feudal age fight. Nice try, Drongo. The spearman holding on on the front line, doing a decent job of defending. Still yet to see the horsemen engage. They're coming around the top side, looking to try and get in. Got to be careful of those spearmen, the archers on the backside. The camel archers also going to be debuffing, but the, cav the cavalry does decide to fight it out. There's plenty of spears here, and for the moment, Zerton looking very strong. That tower, or that uh, that outpost, that outpost, that, that town center, still going to be struggling. Still going to be struggling, and will be taken out. Now, this is a big victory already for Zerton. He's, he, from this fallback, you're doing great. There's no reason why you need to continue this push unless you're planning on over, on investing, or rather, over overstaying your welcome. Marine Lord's going to have plenty more resources or plenty more units pumping out, and we can see that Castle Age is about to come through for him as well. Th that, that is already a massive victory getting that third TC. Village account, 95 for Marine Lord, 91 for Zerton. And now this is where things start to get, start to really hurt. Uh, do, I, I still don't think he knows where the third TC is. He knows that there's a third TC. And it, it, it pains me so much to know that that third TC remains alive. It, it remains well. Now behind this, Zerton's still going to be able to, to pump out units or to pump out villagers nonstop. He's on that three TC hype. 150 population for Marine Lord as he reaches the castle age. I expect we'll see probably a Manganel or two coming down. Indeed, there's the Manganel coming down now. A little bit of a ram dance. 38 archers. 38 archers. 38 archers on that bad boy. That is a lot of archers. 40 archers. God damn, that's a lot of archers. 48 archers. I don't know why these guys are going so heavy on the archers. I guess that's just that's just the reality of, of modern day Age of Empires, right? It's all about the archers. But the Manganels in response going to be very helpful. Now, Zerton's going to be incredibly careful. He knows that Manganels could be threatening. Battering Ram going to be going down. It's almost like he's baiting them towards it. The Manganel yet to be spotted by the units of Zerton. Still sitting, still looming. Finally going to be revealed. Manganel now revealed. Zerton needs to fall back away from this. Needs to immediately look to get veterancy upgrades. There we go. Veteran archers, veteran spearmen. Ve no, that's pre preservation of knowledge. You can't wait for preservation of knowledge, though. Not for these veterancy upgrades. And you can see that he, he doesn't actually go into horsemen at all. He's just like, nah, we're just sticking with the, the main trash units. They're going to be our go-to. Back over on the other side, veteran archers has come through for Marine Lord. Still yet to see veteran spearmen, though. Plus two also going to be coming through for him. This is where things start to get difficult, though, because Marine Lord going to be fighting up against a pretty decent composition here. And now also we see the Springholds beginning to come out for Zerton. He's almost maxed out right now. 192 population, sitting at 101 villagers. Beautiful, beautiful play from him. And now those walls, unfortunately, not connected. Nice little raid coming through the overchop on that wood line. The consequence of, uh, of trying to save wood means that at the end of the day, you get punished for it. Still that raid coming through. Spears do get the upgrade. It's the veteran spearman going to be chasing that around. And now moving up towards the stone, this should be a bit of an indication if Marine Lord spots this out, the amount of villagers that were up there. And now those knights once again going to be finding a decent little spot up there in the middle of the map. Manganel continues to move forward. Manganel continues to loom, gets off a decent shot, lands and hits about half a spearman. Back towards the south side though. Looks like the, uh, the raid getting cleaned up by the men at arms, swinging their axes. We still only see two TCs over on the side of Marine Lord. So very curious that he, he's not looked to invest in that third TC again. Probably realizes at this point in the game, the difference between two and three TCs, it ain't that big. It ain't that fancy. 
Now Marine Lord looking to establish line of sight across the map. A single knight or lancer behind enemy lines. Just chilling out for the moment. Doing a bit of a John Cena. Might be coming in towards that gold mine and look to potentially punish those villagers. We'll wait and see exactly. As now a keep goes up in the middle of the map. Upon that sacred site, Marine Lord continues to hold down position. Dropping down an outpost of his own. Expanding out that line of sight. We see that villager moving towards the south side. Villager going to be forced away from the center. And now another keep going to be thrown down. Zertan looking incredible once again. We talked about this a bit earlier. He's just... This force that he's got just rolling through the deeps has been very impressive in that night. Now looks like it will go down. Villagers do jump back inside. They're going to need to move on towards the next gold mine. But more and more knights continue running through. Wouldn't you just love a wall all the way down to here? Wouldn't you just love a wall across there? Indeed you would. But unfortunately, you're not going to get it. At least not yet. The APM requirement is just too damn high. And we can't afford those kind of walls. But now, Marine Lord, once again on the defensive. It's going to be Springlord's back here for him. He knows how important it is to maintain that siege superiority. But now the Archer numbers really starting to build up. And the trash wars between these two guys looking fierce as ever. Trash in particular, a very, very strong element of, of the meta. And perhaps that's why we start to see Abbasid rising as one of the top civilizations is because of these constant trash wars. They have the best trash in the game. Composite bows for their veteran or for their archers. Phalanx for their spears. And beautiful micro coming in now. The uh, the Springlord's going to get taken out by the enemy Springlord's. The same time raids going down. Looks like men at arm and spearmen going to be trying to deal with it. See a villager just chilling out in the outpost for now. Large gold vein going to get taken up, but the push still keeps coming to shove. Marine Lord tries to hold on a little bit longer. He's actually got siege workshops going down. The guy's got no time right now to construct anything. It's going to be a mangonel. We also see that he's looking to get greased axles at the front. He's got triple siege workshop right now as an Abbasid player. I think he might have forgotten his special ability, even though we've seen him used it, or use it. rather. Archer Wars going strong. 50 archers versus 40 archers. Just when you thought no other trash unit was the one that mattered, where are the horsemen? Where are the horsemen? Relic's actually out here as well. Still yet to be placed back in. We can double check with that in a little bit. Still holding on. Marine Lord's going to be doing a decent job of repelling this. Some crossbows also getting thrown out here. Curious decision that he's gone for the crossbows. I wonder what the thought process is behind that. There's no real need. On, on, now we've got crossbows coming out on the other side as well. Very interesting that he's gone for crossbows here. How do crossbows stack up in these fights? I would, I would assume not very well. They do 14 damage. They've got a range of 5. 80 health versus 80 health. 9 damage. Like, obviously, they do well. But is it worth it? Like, what is the difference that we're talking here? We're talking... That's 120 resources versus 80. And it's gold. I mean, it's probably not terrible, is it? It's not terrible. It's a nice little bit of extra oomph in the army. I think it's a slower fire rate, though, isn't it? 2.12... Oh, yeah, it's way slower on the fire rate. So even though you do, you technically do more damage uh, up, up front, it probably works out to be similar DPS over the course of a fight. Now villagers going down at all corners of the map. Zerton going to be forced back away from the tree line. If he wakes up, if he realizes, he might not have realized. He's under attack on multiple fronts. Treb's firing off. Villager count 108 versus 119 of Marine Lord. Marine Lord going to continue dwindling that villager count of his enemy. Still raids moving in across the map doing a, such a good job. And this is something that Marine Lord is infamous for. We saw him do this in the earlier game. He just always looks to just throw just a handful of units. Just get him over to the enemy side. Just, I, I don't care. Just send a knight over here. Send an archer over there. Just be annoying. And that's what he does. He is annoying. If, if Marine Lord had a middle name, it would be annoying. He's just annoying. He's all, everywhere. Like when you watch someone like Beastie, it's methodical. It's walls. I'm going to take this part of the map. I'm going to wall it out. I'm going to take this part of the map. I'm going to wall it out. I'm going to out multitask you i'm gonna outplay you and i'm gonna just beat you heads up whereas marine lord he's like i'm gonna dance around you i'm gonna cut you a thousand times and then i'm gonna split you down the middle and that's what he's doing right now as he heads into the wood line just being annoying once again absolutely fearless there is you know the the thought right now of 20 horsemen coming out is just not even on his mind he's got absolutely no idea or no, no thought no care for it village account though We'll check in with Marine Lord, see how he's doing. 123 versus 103. Archers still pushing through, have taken out plenty of villagers. 20 villager difference between these two. Now, Zerton could look to commit here to the main town centers and to the House of Wisdom. We do have the Imperial Age coming through. 
on that House of Wisdom, which is going to give it a nice little buff when it comes to the health points on that. Should go from 12,000, I think, up to 19,000. So helps him delay it a little bit. But Marine Lord, he's trying his best to force his enemy out of his or out of his own base and get him back to fight over on his side. And you can see he's, he's not really doing a good job of that because Zerton is really sticking it to him. Now, remember, Zerton is up in this series. He won the first game. He's currently 1-0 in this series. This is match point. This is a best of three. And Zerton's looking even more likely like he might just be finishing this game. He's going to continue pushing forward. Keeps going up, looking to solidify the position. No boiling oil just yet, but still holding on back in the base. Men at Arms going to be coming out. Unfortunately, there's a handful of crossbows that are mixed in there. And now we see Trebs on the other side. The Imperial Age yet to come through. It's going to be the military wing. Not too long before it comes through. 15 seconds. But now the Springwood's moving up. Not enough trebuchets out. I would have loved... You know, if we'd seen four or five trebuchets here, this, this game would be over. This game would be 100% over if you had four or five trebuchets. But if you got four or five trebuchets, perhaps you don't even have... You don't have a response back home. I love that he's still chasing this around. Marine Lord reaches the Imperial Age. 17,000. Not 19. 17,000 health on that House of Wisdom. Plenty of health. And now he's going to be really under threat. Marine Lord sitting here from the pocket. A Culverin is going to be his choice. Now... Why is the Culverin incredibly good in this scenario? Culverin has an extra bit of range. So instead of doing, instead of having 10 range, it's got 12 range. And it doesn't need the Roller Shutter Triggers upgrade like, like uh, the Springwoods need. Uh, but most importantly, it's got a bigger health pool, which means it's very easy to repair it up. You can take a fair bit of hurt before you, you, you need to really fall back away from that. And we can see the Springwood number is going to start to climb now for Zerton. And that's the right move. Zerton needs to get higher number of Springwoods because then that's going to allow him to one-shot the Culverin as long as he's able to get to the Culverin. That's going to be the key factor. Now, Treb's actually looking to Treb down the Siege Workshops. So you can see he knows that Culverin are on the way. So he's like, we're just going to get rid of the Siege Workshops to deal with this. Springwood's moving forward, getting taken out. First one gets taken out. Second one also going to be pushed away. He's got plenty more on the back line, but unfortunately, he barely doesn't... He doesn't even know. There's more Siege Workshops down here. Five Siege Workshops out for Marine Lord this game. 190 population. Majority of the attacks, uh, of the attacks over on the other side have been closed to shut down, I say, as the Elite Archers continue running away from those Men-at-Arms, just being so damn annoying. This is, and that's what Marine Lord's good at. He's just... He's multitasking. He's on a million different fronts. Culverin is out now. And with that Culverin coming out, it means it's only a matter of time until this push is completely stalled out. The Trebs are going to have to fall back because they can't maintain uh, their presence underneath the keep because the Trebuchets aren't being challenged by the Springles because the Spr Springles are dead because, well, they they sacrificed themselves to the men at arms, but they would have sacrificed themselves to the Culverin anyway. And now that keep going to be going down shortly. Trebuchets. Townsend on, on full health. Beautiful job by Marine Lord to make, make sure the integrity of that position is held. Village account 133. 103 for his opponent. Zerton only sitting on 103. And now I keep coming up on the south side. We'll check in and see where the relics are. One, two, three. And we did see a fourth relic here. I got no idea where the fifth one is. Potentially in here. Nope, not in there. Potentially in here. Nope, not in there. I got no idea where those, that fifth relic is. I might be blind. I'm legally blind. Another outpost coming up. Marine Lord just doing the classic. Still behind enemy lines. Men at arms just being pesky, being annoying. Dropping down more outposts. He's got plenty of line of sight. No emplacement means it's got, he's going to lose this one very quickly. But now up towards the north. Men at arm raid coming in. He's finally found that third town center. Zerton probably going to just be putting his head in his hands and saying, I can't believe it was, it was up here the whole time. I could have so easily killed it. And yes, you could have. If you just realized it was on the hunt. That was the simple fact. H3 now come, or H4 rather, coming through for Zerton. This game shaping up to be a quite a good one. Marine Lord's tried his best to hold on. I, I would be arguing right now that he's in a decent position. We don't have scores enabled, but if we did, I've got a feeling Marine Lord would be a little bit ahead of his opponent. He's got a lot of the Imperial upgrades that have come through. You can see Elite Men at Arms have come through, as well as Elite Archer. We know we saw that one a bit earlier. And yet to get through Composite Bows just yet. Look at that. Re reduces the reload time of Archers by 33%. 33% reload time on the archers that is insane that is a huge reduction roller shutter triggers now coming out also see elite horsemen gonna be the the uh the option that he elects to go for so not gonna be going for camels really not going for camels i can't believe it i don't think i've ever looked at this and gone like what is that it's only now that i look at it i'm like what the heck is that that's the elite camel upgrade i don't i don't ever remember looking at that and being like yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna that's what i'm gonna get i, w I want some of that 
I've seen this one before. Camel archers, baby. And interestingly, in, the, in this matchup, we don't see any camel archers. It, there's no mobility required. It is just... I mean, we're, we're seeing raids with men at arms. We're seeing raids with archers, raids with crossbows. That's been it. There's been nothing else. I don't know why he just didn't... Oh, wait. Oh, that's oh that's a cannon emplacement. I was going to say, I don't know why he just didn't turn around and attack this outpost. Oh, that that's why he didn't. Because it's got a cannon emplacement. You can't contest that outpost. So now that gold mine has been completely neutralized and stops him from collecting that. He's still got a second one down here to the south and a third one down here even further. But obviously, you want to take the, the more forward gold mines before you take your safer ones. Stonewall's now coming up to try and defend this position or at least defend this flank. More and more wood being taken in the center of the map. We've seen the first wood line work, work through. The second one come through. The third one's gone through. And now moving towards these smaller little lumps in the middle. Horsemen towards the north have been upgraded to elite status. These guys are, are extra uh, extra elite, extra 1337. And now, now we wait and see where that push is. There's a lot of siege coming out for Marine Lord. He's looking like he might be taking on the role of a certain beast, if you will. But more men at arms coming out. Those archers looking good as well check in with Zertan. His army's looking formidable. What exactly do we have here? We got some elite horsemen. Plus three ranged attack, is, ranged armor rather, is coming through. Crossbows yet to be upgraded. Archers yet to be upgraded. Men at arms yet to be upgraded. A lot of units needing upgrades. Unfortunately, not a lot of gold in the bank. It's going to be tough for him to hold on. Bombard up towards the north. Looking to clear out the outpost. We hear more siege over towards our east side. Keep going to be going down. But he's going to be able to force out this or take out this outpost, which fortunately means the gold vein is now open. A little bit of a flank coming in. Looks like he should be able to clean up both of the bombards. First one does go down. Second one going to be going down as well. Elite Spearman looking to try and defend this position. He needs to move them away. Indeed, he does. Taking his enemy a little bit by surprise with the elite, uh, elite horsemen, I say, as I remember the raid that just happened a little bit earlier. And now those horsemen looking to try and dive deep into the uh, into the base of his enemy and potentially take out those springles he's doing a decent job chasing away the units from the front line at the same times towards at uh, the same time towards the middle the outpost crawl continues to keep looking to fire down upon the units below them and that infantry mass continues move, moving forward do we have comp bows in let's take a look take a look take a look where's the archers no we still don't have composite bows in just yet i don't think oh there we go we finally got composite bows coming in for marine lord it is the imperial abbasid upgrade that changes the way that this civilization plays. It makes it insane in the late game because rem remember we were talking about earlier where you've got 40 archers against 40 spearmen and the archers are just going to be overkilling those spearmen, right? Like they're doing a million damage to each spear, but each spear's only got like 80 health. So they're overkilling them. They're not being very effective. What composite bows is it really increases the effectiveness of those archers because now they're firing 33% faster. Well, technically they're, they're, fire they're reloading 33% faster, which is a little bit different. Rather, they're just they're reducing the reload time by 33%, which technically means they're increasing their attack speed by 50%. It's complicated. I know. Bear with me. It, 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 look, it's just a good thing if you're a fan of archers. Let's take a look and see what the difference is between these two guys. Uh, let's see if we can hover over one. You've got 1.62 attack speed. That's going to drop down to maybe 1.4, 1.38, something like that. 1.25 attack speed. Look at that. These bad boys firing off one attack every 1.25 seconds. Compare that over to the archers on the other side of the field. And they're going to be firing off one every 1 1.6, one every 1.62. There you go. And it's a huge difference. It really starts stacking up with that attack speed in the late game because it just enables you to really shred through all those units. Just brruh, 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 brruh. You know, it's, it's just bang, 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 bang. Very easy, very efficient, very quick. And that's what makes it such a strong upgrade. Uh, but now we'll take a look over on the other side of the map as we do have Marine Lord continuing to clean this up. I'm loving the control that he's got down here on the south side. Outposts absolutely everywhere. A couple of emplacements through for him. But at the same time, Zertan has established his own form of control down here. A little bit of a hole in the in the in the center here. Relics still yet to be picked up. He's got a nice safe one back here. No relics in the bag for him. University has come through. Not a lot of upgrades. Would love to see something like the elite army tactics upgrade come through. Give those spearmen a little bit more of a buff. But now moving up towards the large gold vein in the north, the question starts to be asked: Where is the rest of the gold on this map? Where have we got it? So there's gold in the middle, 4.5k. There's gold up to the top. 3.4k but where are the other golds we've got another gold with a thousand on it and a gold down here with 200 on it other than that we're pretty much all dried up scotty that is that is not a good place to be 
And now we start seeing players looking to contest sacred sites, realizing, well, hold on a minute. I guess we can contest this. And you can really see the difference in the way that this civilization plays compared to civilizations that might be more focused around religion. Relics getting picked up at 34 minutes into the game. It's that last relic. And it's the safe relic that's getting picked up. Imagine if this had gotten picked up at 15 minutes. That'd be 2,000 gold we'd be talking about. But it's not. It's getting picked up at 35 minutes. And things aren't looking as pretty for certain as they could be. Had he picked up that relic a bit earlier? Who knows? He might be in a better, a bit of a better spot. Culverin doesn't get taken out. Villagers are all going to get mauled, unfortunately. We'll check in on the village account. One, 116 versus 118. So pretty even, Stevens. But look at the resource difference. That's where it really comes in. Marine Lord's got plenty of resources in the bank. Tithe Barn's also going to be coming through. He's got three relics that he's holding on to. Don't mind if I do. I'm not sure how many other relics he's got out here, but I would probably assume he's got four. I'm going to go with four. I reckon that's a pretty safe amount of relics to, to bet. Villagers moving forward. A little bit of repair going on as well. Looking to repair a keep somewhere. I'm not sure exactly where. Sacred Sites being captured. That's the second one. Plenty of units on the front line here. They're going to be able to crunch their way through this. Elite men at arms together with the elite spears. And at the same time, the archers in the back line. Look how fast they fire off. Look at them fire off right now. They, they look like Wind Ranger from Dota 2. Just boo, 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 boo. You guys, you guys know what I'm talking about when she ulties and she's like... <laughs> Sorry, I shouldn't have done that. But uh, I did. And I enjoyed it. And I will continue to do that. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> they fire pretty damn quick, though. So, I mean, at this point, Marine Lord able to establish pretty significant control of the center. Dominance is his middle name. And now going to be moving into camels. Camel archers, as well as getting camel camel rider shields. Okay. Marine Lord looking to meme it up a little bit. I like it. I like it. The meme lord is not just a man of marines. He's also a man of memes. And now, in the center of the map, the horsemen have come out. And keep in mind, these are these newly upgraded or newly promoted newly buffed horsemen that have got extra base fucking the abyssid units dude oh, 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 oh. always the abyssid units i don't know why the abyssid units are so emotive but they, they don't like death let's just put it that way marine lord however seems to love it and he is absolutely basking in it right now as he pushes towards his enemy's base things really not looking good for zert he's on 150 pop he's turning towards hand cannoneers but the consequence of going for hand cannon is, look, they, they pack a lot of punch, but at the end of the day, they're going to get shredded by those archers because of the higher attack speed. When you've got that many archers, you're just able to focus them down. One, two, three, four, just bam, 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 bam. Whereas unfortunately for the hand cannoneers, they've got a bit, bit of a slower attack speed. So it really does hurt when it comes to situations like this. Now Marine Lord looking to regroup on this north side and close out his enemy who's trying his best to take out the culverin will, will actually be successful as the horsemen make their way away. Zerton looking pretty decent on the defense, but unfortunately, I mean, the, the, the story of this game, if I could summarize it in a sentence, it would be complete your walls. That would be it. Im imagine if he'd just been fully walled in. You often see players do this where they leave a big gaping hole at the front of their base and then it gets rammed by a thousand different units and the, the players are just like, how are these units getting in? It's because it's you left a big hole at the front. Culverin trying to take out the Bombard. Might be successful. Doesn't have the lock. It doesn't look like it does. Manganel might be going for the shot. Was trying. Bombard managing to escape to safety. 42 health. Still that hole remains. And still Zerton trying his best to fill it. Trying to plug it. But it's going to be tough. The micro... The, the micro management rather has just really come out quite well from Marine Lord this game. And now we see everything culminating in what appears to be a, a last big push as sacred site victory is being approached we've got one in the north one in the center as a little bit of a fight breaks out spearman on the front line together with the men at arms neutralize a sacred site if you didn't realize that's that's the name of the game and look, let's just get it up there sacred tracker oh there it is three out of three sacred sites have been taken do not have any questions about the sacred sites on this map ladies and gentlemen three of them have been taken and there are three of them that are in existence when it comes to the timer, I've got no idea. We don't count timers here. We're, we're a time-free zone. But, uh, I mean, at this point, I, I don't think you're going to need to count out 10 minutes in this game. I reckon you're probably going to have to count out 10 seconds because things are not looking good for Zerton. Marine Lord is looking to even up this series and take it to a game three. And it looks like he's going to be able to do it. The third sacred site down the south. If you hadn't counted them already, there are three of them. And they are sacred. And they are sites. And they are captured. They are in Marine Lord's name. He's holding on for dear life and he's done well. We saw that early push almost clean him up. There was a, a town center that got taken out. He pushed towards the second TC. He was looking to really commit towards that push, but unfortunately, the distraction that happened back in the base of, of, of Zerton just 
was enough to to divert attention divert reinforcements and did a great job and marine lord was able to hold he got to imperial he got the culves out and it was all over red rover and from there now this is where it gets tough keeps going down siege continuing to move forward men at arms and that's going to be a good game zern will tap out marine lord will be the victor in this game game number three going to be coming up for you guys ladies and gentlemen this has been the road to red bull wallalow legacy make sure you check out egc tv this weekend 15 GMT, Saturday and Sunday. Be there or be square.